Hey guys, so today let's just get ready together. It's a super relaxed day and the makeup is going to be very, very, very simple. Um, I've already moisturized my face um, and put a serum on it. I'm going to start with my Meteorites Baby Glow. I'm trying to finish off this product. It's nearly there, but as always, when you're at the very end, that's when it feels like it's going the slowest. Um, it's a very sheer sunscreen infused makeup with some skincare benefits. Um, I do recommend it. I think it's a really good purchase if you want something super sheer and uh, you're into like skincare laden um, makeup, which I am really into actually. I think the technology nowadays really allows us to combine these functions, different functions of makeup into one and we should take advantage of it. So I've massaged the uh, BB cream into my face. It's super, super lightweight again. And it has not really con concealed very much. You can see that all the imperfections are still hanging out there. I'm going to take my Benefit Boing concealer, uh, which I am almost out of as well, and just add a little bit of concealing. Um, I wanted to talk to you about uh, something that I've been kind of listening uh, a podcast about and also encountered recently in um, a video that I was watching, a YouTube video I was watching, and that YouTube video was uh, by a girl from Great Britain. I'm really enjoying her channel, it's Eva in the City, and uh, one of her older videos, I don't know, it just kind of was playing in the background, I was m cooking something in the kitchen and I just would like let the playlist go. Um, and I was watching her, um, and she was talking about sort of controlling your emotions in a way that you control your reactions to other people, to situations. Like you can let yourself feel things, that's no problem. But what she was talking about is the fact that nobody can make you feel badly uh, or spoil your day um, by saying something without you participating in it. Um, okay, so I think I'll go for my brows right now because I feel like I need to get the basics down before I add anything colorful or fun. Um, so what Eva was talking about is uh, the fact that really without your partaking in this exchange of negativity, nobody can really make you feel bad because you can just choose not to feel bad, <laughs> just shrug it off and move on. Um, and I really agree with that. Um, I've been having sort of a tougher time recently with work, not because somebody's saying something bad to me, but just sheerly, purely because of, you know, the amount of hours that I spend away from my family, I spend in the hospital, I spend around sick and dying people, um, and I have no control over it. It's uh, what is required of me at the moment, and I don't, can't really have a say in what I want to do, what I don't want to do. Um, so it's, uh, it's interesting. I think a lot of it, uh, a lot of how you feel has to do with how much control you feel you have over your life. And, uh, let me tell you in, in my field at the moment and where I am in my career, I don't have much control over how much I work, where I work, what I do. It's just kind of like what is required of me. I do. Um, and interestingly, I think one of the least satisfying things in general is to feel like you're not in control of your schedule, of your time, of your energy, uh, and on top of not being in control and just feeling like you just do what you're told uh, to do, uh, but at the same time carrying huge amounts of responsibility for people's lives and health, uh, but not having any say in what is going on during your day at all. Uh, and how long your days are and how much you're out of the house like basically right now it's 80 hour weeks for me uh, consistently and every few days I do 24 hour shifts and it's just killing me I can't say that it's the quality of life is next to zero it's really poor um, and I do feel that part of it is that part of it is just simply the scheduling and part of it is really has to do with, uh, um, with you know, the amount of hours. And so 
um, what Eva was saying is you can choose how you feel about things and the, the negativity you personally bring into your own life um, because events in your life don't really have a coloring to them, positive or negative. It's how you interpret them and how you feel about them. And you can learn to influence that and that's what I'm trying to work on right now because I certainly don't feel like I am mentally in the best space just because of the type of types of things I have to do and the amount of work I have. Um, I know that it's finite um, and I'm lucky to be where I am. I have a career that is very rewarding and uh, is very well compensated. But right now, just it's tough. It's tough. I'm going to powder with the NYX Stay Matte But Not Flat powder foundation. But uh, yeah, so my family's suffering. I don't see my kid very much and it's just not a healthy place to be. And I see other people working in the same situation as I am in right now and they are so unhappy. Like people in that situation are so miserable. They don't want to be there. It's, it's ridiculous. Like something has to change. I don't think 24, 30 hour shifts are healthy. Um, not good for doctors, really not good for patients. Toxic, very toxic. Well, that looks nice. So um, what I am sort of thinking about and why I'm talking about that uh, YouTube video and podcast I was listening to, I'm going to take a hula bronzer, um, is because I'm trying, because I can't change the situation because it is what it is. I'm just trying to sort of, first of all, see it in perspective and saying I'm working towards that goal and I won't have to do that forever. I just need to like, you know, shut up and get through what I have to get through right now. Although it's not the happiest or the most healthy environment. It's not really good for me, for the family or anybody except again, for people who are um, gaining service coverage for very, very cheap. Uh, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not healthy or happy, but it's fine it. And then after that, I can just wave my hand and say, no, thanks, no more. Um, you guys can do whatever you want. I'll do my own thing over here and I'll regulate my own hours and I regulate my own like I just do my own thing and I don't really care what you have to say about it. So that's very helpful to sort of think like, okay, I feel run down, but it won't last forever. That's helpful because there's an end to it. But also just keep in mind the bigger picture. Um, what I found really helpful is actually what uh, Eva in the city was, or Eva in the city was talking about. And that's the fact that when you are in that situation where you don't want to be, uh, it's helpful to just try to focus on the positive and try to remind yourself how lucky you are to have certain things that you do have in life and I have so much to be lucky about. I'm just too tired to appreciate it at the moment but I just need to focus and appreciate the good things that are around me and I have, I have like a ton to be grateful for. So I need to just sort of keep in mind that it's not forever and then focus on the good things and then hopefully get through the next little while and move on with my life and not think about this time ever again. Um, um, it's going to be a tough few months just in terms of how my schedule worked, worked out and what kind of services I'm on. Um, I am going to be so excited to be done with this. You have no idea. If you're in medicine, if you're in a residency program, you will know exactly what I'm talking about and how much your life, quality of life just becomes non-existent and how there is like no light at the end of the tunnel sometimes because you just foresee months and months and months of this like grueling grind where your entire existence is like erased and you're thrown into doing some some things that you really don't want to do and aren't going to be a part of your future career but you have to get through to get to where you need to be um yeah i think i'm going to go in with the rocketeur blush um and give myself a little bit of color because at this point I'm having nightmares of my pager going off even when I'm not on call I just like wake up to check my pager and then remember I'm not on call and feel relieved but I'm still awake in the middle of the night multiple times a night like it's not healthy at all, at all. and I know I'm not the only one and I am not like a paranoid person and I'm generally do not suffer from any kind of anxiety or depression or any mental disorder whatsoever I never have um, but uh, I just, I find myself getting these anxiety wake-ups in the middle of the night. I do go back to sleep 
and it's not super disruptive to my nights even when i'm not on call when you're on, on call clearly your life is absolute crap <laughs> because it's a 24 hour shift really longer because then you go into round on top of that but uh to be honest it's just like it's messing with me at this point like i will wake up in the middle of the night just paranoid that i missed a page and somebody's dying somewhere and i'm in my bed and I'm, it's not even my job to do that that night um but yeah so interesting i'm sure there are resident physicians out there who are going to know exactly what i'm talking about um and we just hope that it's worth it in the end and some days you feel like it can't possibly be because my life is an absolute piece of shit right now and some days you're like oh it's not so bad and um look at that i got out of clinic like you know before six o'clock at night and i've only been here for 12 hours how great <laughs> you know it's, it's a short day today i'm going to put the milani brow gel into my brows so eva is right the best we can do to deal with a situation we don't want to want to be in is a find a way to get out of that situation b just uh, you know find the good things and focus on that because it's all a matter of perspective not all of it but a lot of it is a matter of perspective and i'm just trying here to develop a positive outlook and find good things to focus on um and sort of uh get through what i have to get through and just move on after that i will be uh, it's very interesting i find myself to be that person who moves on from things and then leaves them behind and never thinks about them again like for instance, I had an interesting experience during my master's where my supervisor was a quite an interesting guy, not much of a teacher. Um, it was a bit of a negative atmosphere in the lab, not personally towards me, but in general. Um, and so I just found myself like I got through what I had to get through. I, 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 I wrote my thesis and then I just moved on and I never looked back. I didn't talk to the people who were in there after that, although I developed some friendly relationships. I did not ever contact my supervisor after I, I was graduated. I just didn't want any piece of it and didn't want to be a part of it in any way possible. Um, and I just feel myself, and then I forget that it even happened. It's like, okay, what can I extract from this situation? What's the best thing I can make out of this situation? Um, and uh, sort of uh, how can I benefit from it? What can I learn from it? And then once I'm done with that situation, I move on and discard it and just keep the, what I learned and like certain things um, that are going to be helpful in the future. And all the negative emotions, all the memories, everything, just trash, garbage, don't need it, offloading. <laughs> so I feel like this experience is probably going to be sort of similar uh, where I just like get what I need to get. I learn what I need to learn. I, 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 I gather and benefit um, the, in the best possible way for me from this experience and then I just trash all the negative emotions, tiredness, resentment and just feeling like you're like in a, not, in, not, not in a good place mentally and you were exploited. Uh, and of course, I, I'm pretty sure everybody who would be forced to work the hours if I'm, I am forced to work would feel a bit exploited and sort of like they don't want to be there. Um, at least based on what I see in my colleagues, that's the case. I'm going to take the same uh, Rocateur blush and I'm going to sort of um, use it all over my eyelid. Like I said, it's going to be a pretty basic, basic, basic look. Tell me how do you deal with these kinds of situations in your life where you don't want to be there but maybe there's something to be gained by being there in the end but you have to sort of get through some unpleasantries or feel like your life is not really going how you want it to go or you can't really do what you want to do until you uh, are sort of out of that particular spot because that's what it feels like to me right now. So this is actually very pretty. Um, I kind of like to do the same thing on cheeks and eyes. I think it looks really nice. Um, obviously, just my opinion, but uh, if you don't have very sensitive eyes, you can definitely sort of mix and match your powder products. Basically, m most of those powder, product, pow powder products are formulated in the same exact way wherever you put them on the uh, face, just different levels of pigmentation because maybe you don't want your blush to be as pigmented as your eyeshadow, I don't know. Next, I will take my Ilamasca Brow Cake and I'm not using it for brows today. I am, however, going to use it um, for a liner and I do do that with brow powders as well. Again, powder is a powder is a powder. It's really not that different 
and um, this is a chocolatey dark brown and I'm going to just line my upper lash line with that color and a tiny little brush look how little that brush is here we are all one eye done I'm doing a super basic slight wing here nothing crazy so this is quite a pretty fresh look I'm going to take uh, the lip pencil by, by, by Beauty in the color Madeira and give myself a pout a little nude lip um, and the last thing is obviously mascara superhero mascara by Eat Cosmetics um, I'm just starting to wear it I've worn it this is my second time and I'm actually quite impressed this is pretty good mascara and it really holds on to my lashes does not flake does not smudge just stays put all day long so that's it for today i hope you like the look that we came out with let me know how you are staying positive and how you are sort of projecting your thoughts into the future rather than focusing on reality that doesn't really align with, with where you want to be at that very moment i'm always curious that's it for today see you guys later bye bye